Hey there boys and girls, Lucky here and welcome back to another CSGO video. So this video will be somewhat of a rant, so if you're not the biggest fan of that, you have been warned. Okay, so recently there have been some things, well actually for quite some time now, there have been several things or a couple of things that really annoyed me in the CSGO community. It is no secret that the majority of the CSGO community just likes to complain and sometimes is very whiny for the most part. That would be that annoying circle jerk of wealth being an evil money whoring monster not caring about the community machine-ish thing. So before you jump onto the bandwagon or into the sheepherd, please listen to my unpopular opinion about Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Okay, first of all, CSGO is not dying, not in content nor in real player numbers. I say real player numbers because there has been quite a drop from about 700k active players to about 500k active players. CS had a boom and with that boom gambling sites were on the rise, many many players who did not care for CS at all and barely played the game beyond maybe a round of deathmatch a month came to the game to make money. Oftentimes non-CSGO related YouTubers even made their own gambling sites and brought in many many players from, for example, Call of Duty or something like that. CS had its reputation heavily damaged. It used to be the game in the media for like school shootings and making people rage and stuff like that and then it became the game for online gambling for minors. Of course, we players know that neither of that is true. CS is a game that makes you strive for perfection. It's the thrill of defusing the bomb just in time or pulling off an insane clutch to win the round and that's what makes the game so great and entertaining. CS is a game of passion and an FPS with a history like no other. So yeah, there was a peak in players but no actual players. The number of actual players never really changed much. Now in CS 1.6 and CSS as well, they had their own charms and they were different in their own ways no matter which one you preferred. Both are important parts of CS history. Having said that, I want to ask you guys, what is CSGO's place in CS history? My answer is, CSGO hasn't quite found its place yet and that's why it, there's so many changes. Some say the sounds, for example, were changed because of that, even though I personally think that that had to be done for a coming sound update for better audio locating, like hearing footsteps better and stuff like that. So yeah, CSGO was planned as a console PC cross-platform game which mainly was a port of CS Source and I think Valve just recently realized that CSGO deserves its own place in CS history as its own iteration of CS and that's why they're like why we're seeing so many changes being applied to the game. This for me is just the first indicator of Valve actually caring about the game even though they might not completely know yet what CSGO should look like in its final form. Okay, so second of all, after the whole Valve doesn't care thing, they do not have to priority straight and only one money thing. Well, Valve made numerous updates just the past few weeks. After another complaint post on the Global Offensive subreddit, one of the mods that doesn't actually explain the situation and broke the circle jerk, and I really appreciate the effort he put into all of his writing, so you can find the red thread in the description down below. All credit goes to him. Please give it a read, it's a really good thing. So now, some call Valve money hungry and a money whore, not caring about the game or the players. And I think as you were able to read just now, you can see that you might have been or that those people might have been wrong or part of the circle jerk and that they indeed were blinded by part of, while well, being part of the sheep herd. So let's talk about companies making money now. Valve is a company and a company needs to make money, otherwise there will be no company and in return there won't be any products by said company. In our case, if Valve would not make money, there wouldn't be like any games and also no support for the, well, or updates for the non-existent games then. So please think twice about complaining about companies trying to make money, especially since the game itself is only 15 bucks instead of your usual AAA title that costs you 16 bucks plus another 60 bucks of premium with microtransactions on like top of that and those do not offer nearly the playtime CS does. So yeah, Valve does make money from CSGO, but please also keep in mind Valve is owning Steam. The money they're making from CSGO alone is minimal if compared to the millions of games they're selling to the over 100 million users on Steam. Also keep in mind the money made from CSGO cases and so on and so forth is also going towards the major prize pools as well as going to the creators of the skins and stickers. So yes, they're making money but calling CSGO a money milking machine is far from the truth and if put properly into perspective it is laughable at best. Okay, since we also cleared that Valve isn't using CSGO as a money milking machine, but is updating it regularly to make the game, we can also talk about recent changes now. As I already mentioned before, I think the sound update is maybe part of making CSGO its own CS, but more so probably an update for a coming bigger update to improve the sound overall to better hear footsteps and stuff like that. Also, real quickly on the sounds, the thing why you're not liking them is not because the old ones are better or they're, like the new ones are worse, because they really like aren't and the old ones really weren't better, but because you were used to them. 
And just imagine like having a friend and all of a sudden he has a different wife. Like it's still the same friend, but it changed, so you're kind of surprised by that. Also, of course, you won't be able to distinguish them right off the bat if you hear them for the first time. You had years to learn the other sounds and you only had we only had the new sounds for a couple of weeks, so give them a chance. Like, I also saw many people saying that with the new sounds they will quit the game and a week later they already got used to them. Like who remembers like complaining about the explosion sounds being changed or the knife sounds being changed? It's it's really just getting used to it. That's pretty much all about it. Now the graffitis or sprays are an old part of CS. They have been in 1.6 and in Source as well. And no, Overwatch did not have them first. I can understand that all players might be upset about the charges, while Source and 1.6 had no such thing. And then again, newer players complain about them being there in general because it damages the competitive aspect of the game. And I think the incentive with not having unlimited charges and them only lasting for a certain amount of time is that comp play won't be interrupted or spammed. It's a way in between to cater somewhat to both parties. I mean, it's pretty hard to please everyone in community as big as CSGO. So yeah, a command to disable them should be something that Valve should consider to keep the competitive aspect of the game even cleaner. Also keep in mind, yes, you can buy the sprays, but you also get them for free for the weekly rank up drop. So it's really just a fun addition and people should lighten up a little more and do not get like ape shit on everything. Also yeah, you used to be able to use your own files, but in today's day and age you well, you can't really do that anymore with four obvious reasons. And yes, you can do one-way glass with the graffiti, which is obviously a bug, which should be fixed fairly soon. Also, the suggestion with sprays having limited charges and essentially working like stickers was actually a community suggestion, which was kind of popular if I will link you this piece right here. Now, there's still people complaining about hitboxes, even though they have been fixed. Now, people are trying to show clips of the hit rate not working, but in short, the hitboxes do work. Commands like SV Show Impacts have been glitched for a while and do not like properly represent what's happening in the game. If you think the hitboxes are broken, then the sad truth is that you probably missed. Most likely you encountered weapon spread or something of the player model that is no actual part of a hitbox, like the Dust 2 CT hat for example. Or your connection or the connection of the enemy were acting up, resulting in some weird using, but that always has been a problem with online play. So from my point of view, there's really only one big problem that is hurting CSGO and that's hackers. Bad players with low self Steam using hacks to boost their pathetic ego. Now, people complain about VAC and Valve's priorities because they add sounds and sprays before fixing the hacker problem. When working on a game, everyone has a certain part they're focusing on. The sound guys do not code the anti-cheat client. The creative team does not code the anti-cheat things either. They rework sounds or add operations and skins. Trust me, I hate hackers as much as the next one, but VAC is doing its job. The problem is it's only, it, it's only detecting cheats where it knows they are cheats. So if CSGO had an additional anti-cheat client like that would launch alongside with it on top of the VAC system, like ECA has for example, I think then we would be able to get rid of most or a majority of the hackers at least. So yeah, CSGO is by no means perfect, but that stupid circle jerk of wealth not caring doesn't help anyone. Many people thought that Nick Banyan's petition the hitbox fix like they they would only need us to say, hey, this doesn't work, and then they're like, oh, okay, then we fix this. Well, truth is, a guy on Reddit made a post explaining how to reproduce the bug so Valve could fix it so they would understand what the issue was. Then again, people complain, but, 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 they're paid to fix the stuff and it's not our job. And yes, they're paid to do their job, and that's why they're trying to find a solution, but coding is very hard, and very, like, every little thing you change can change something else elsewhere, introducing new bugs. So if you never coded anything, I would ask you to try to do so first to understand why it is so hard to do that stuff. Especially since CSGO was originally made by Hidden Path and only got passed onto Valve later, making it even harder to fix it if it's not your own code. Last but not least, 128 tick servers. I bet my life that 80% of the CSGO players would not be able to distinguish between a 64 tick and a 128 tick server. Yes, 128 tick means twice the update rate, but everyone who is only a 60 hertz monitor would not even be able to see it and it would be even more unfair for them, resulting in a more insta-death feeling situation like. Uh, they're more expensive and only a minor part of the community would benefit from them. So yeah, I know that explanation was a little lacking, but it's uh, a topic for another video, so stay tuned for that one as well. So yeah, please stop the circle jerk and make CSGO community great again. <laughs> JK, no, no seriously. Complaining about everything doesn't help. Just be a little bit more positive and see how far CSGO has come already. But I think it's much off for now, I hope you enjoyed the video and like a skill faker out.